growing up Greek, I just remember being at my grandmother's, my yaya's house, and there is nothing that beats like freshly baked bread, the thorny feta, and like Mount Zero Galamata olives. I can't think of like a combination, and we used to call it bukitsas, and I don't even think that's a word. I think she made it up. Today on Dirty Linen's summer series, we are checking in with Connor Curran. I first encountered Connor on MasterChef, where he was a very bright, cheery, talented presence. And he's, um, yeah, now doing a lot of recipe development and partnerships in the food world. And I always love running across his socials. Connor, thank you so much for joining me today on Dirty Linen. Danny, thank you so much for having me. I am honestly such a fan. I have read so much of your work. I kind of grew up with you and Jemima as like my kind of like go-to food hospo writers. So this is incredibly special for me. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for the kind words. Um, I really appreciate it. That's so nice. Uh, so uh, for our summer series on Dirty Linen, we are talking about people's memorable meals. So I would love to know what you got for me. Definitely. So I kind of, um, I've, I've I've traveled a lot of Europe. So a lot of kind of meals that stick out to me are the ones that like I didn't really expect. Um, And my, probably my favorite on the go meal was I was walking down this really terrible street in Marseille. And if anyone's gone to Marseille, they know what I'm kind of talking about. Really dodgy, every shop front, terrible. And I was starving and we went into this bakery and I ended up getting like a citron, like a lemon meringue tart. And I still have dreams about it. Like I still can't get over this tart. And I remember just sitting on the sidewalk and there was like just crying happening around me and been eating this tart and going this is possibly the best tart I've ever encountered and I would just have never just from going down the wrong street and I always think that's the most incredible part that you can find insane food from like the most unexpected places Wow. What do you think it is that makes a lemon tart great? Uh, it's everything. Like the tart has to, but obviously the, the actual, um, the shell itself, like the actual dough has to be incredibly cooked and crisp, but also like the tart, like the, the curd needs to be so punchy um, and then a super hard char on the meringue. But it's, it, all, it all seems quite simple. Like everyone in, like a lot of people have been able to do tarts, but there was something about this damn tart and I can't figure it out that they've done something to it. I was like, it's just better than the rest. <laughs> I love it. And you've taken me to Marseille now, and now I'm thinking about my own uh, little traipses down dodgy alleys. And yeah, it is it is a city that you really can get lost in. And I can totally imagine. I've just got a vision of you with this this like bolt of sunshine in your hand as you're like like just like falling into this tart, and then like the gritty reality of the city is just happening around you. But it's like everything else goes silent, and there's just like angels singing as you bite into the tart. Is that is that pretty much what it was like? You have painted the picture. That is literally a chapter in a book, I'm telling you. That was exactly what was happening. It was like 32 degrees. I was so hot. And it was one of those things where you're like traveling through Europe. The best thing about Europe is obviously just walking down all the wrong streets. Um, and it's very much that. And that's like one of the parts that I miss so much is like trying to find as much Europe in Melbourne and uh, Adelaide right now where I'm at just to like kind of compensate for missing it so much. Ah, oh, amazing. Oh, well, you've transported me already. Connor, what else have you got? Um, so my favorite kind of sit down meal is actually here in Australia. My, my best mate, I had just lived in London for two years and just got home right before COVID hit. And he came and visited me luckily. And we went down to Tasmania and we managed to get a booking at Templo on a 6 PM spot on the share table. And I just remembering just every single meal that came out and he was from England. So they think they know good food, but they don't really know good food. And me and him were just sitting there just, and I know good food. So I was sitting there like, this is insane and very rarely being in hospital for so long i've worked at like super normal and tokyo tina a lot of big places and you have great food every day so it takes a lot for me to kind of go this is amazing there wasn't one dish of the set menu that came out that i was like ah it was every single time my mind just kept getting blown over and over again ah that is amazing i haven't been to templo i've heard a lot about it but i mean if you were to describe it to me how would you describe the restaurant I would say very kind of a modern Australian take on European European food, I would say. Um, the plate, it kind of like, it sits very much in like what Embla is to Melbourne, I feel like Templo is to Tasmania. Um, and the food is just very considered. And I really love when like, you know, I like an album, when a singer releases an album and all the songs kind of make sense in a row. Very similar to Templo, like the set menu just kind of ran like a really beautiful album, like the pastas to the proteins to the sauces and there was highs and lows and divots. And then I just remember being like, I don't think it gets better than this when it comes to like Australian dining. Oh, wow. 
I mean, that's so well described and, and such an amazing endorsement. And I think, you know, it really says something to me about tasting menus, which is sometimes you you eat, you sit down for them and you, you, you're on for the ride, but it feels like perhaps the restaurants never sat down and eaten their own tasting menu. Like it just doesn't have that that sort of synthesis. Like it just feels, yeah, like it's um, – it's not a journey. It's just like a series of vignettes or something, but it sounds like they must have really thoughtfully, like, you know, made that, those progressions really make sense. Oh, definitely. And I think the service, obviously, I'm a huge advocate for service, obviously. And I think, you know, in Australia, we have the best fit outs and the best food. And the one thing that you can't get every single place is perfect or incredible service. And I think the way that they explained it and designed it and spoke about it, you know, it's kind of nice when you see your uh, your weight person get as excited about it as you were about to get excited about it. And so just that progression that there were the control involved, honestly, from top to bottom, I cannot recommend them enough. I'm excited for you to go for the first time. Like that's the exciting part ah oh, I'm really excited I feel I, I don't know I feel like everywhere that I plan to go these days it's like well obviously I'm going to need to stay there for a month because there's just a lot of eating to be done but of course that's not going to be possible so what am I going to do it's a crisis <laughs> <laughs> I do feel you I do feel especially because like we've obviously lived in Melbourne in multiple lockdowns the initial feelings to go how many how much dinners and lunches can I fit in just in case lose it all of a sudden so i completely get where you're coming from okay connor have you got something else for me i do i've got like i'll, I'll go with one where like i think probably my favorite meal in the world and when i finished my chef the same question i got every single time from every uh reporter was what meal would you like to have on death row which i think is um such a lovely positive question um but in saying that it kind of elicits like what would you like in your last second that it's always been you know my growing up greek i just remember being at my grandmother's my yaya's house and there is nothing that beats like freshly baked bread the doni feta and like Mount Zero Kalamata Olives. I can't think of like a combination and we used to call it Bukitsas and I don't even think that's a word. I think she made it up. Um, so if I had to go anywhere right now and have like a meal at a table, it'd still be that because I don't think anything beats that like initial response to food because it obviously did something in me. Yeah. Wow. Because I think I think mine would be bread and butter. So I'm sort of in the wheelhouse with you, but I don't know. It's, yeah, it's like you don't want you. <laughs> let's not go to delve too much into our last meals, but you don't want it to be too complex, do you? I feel like when it really comes down to it, the thing we're going to reach for is, is, is comfort, it's memories, it's, yeah, it's heritage. Definitely. I even think um, Embla is doing, they had like a Kalamata olive butter and bread thing on recently and it really was like, you know, it's really crazy if you go to a place like Embla and have that plate and it's meant to be the starting, so simple, but it's possibly the most delicious. And I don't think there is such a thing with like nostalgia and eating food that is so uncomplicated because I didn't grow up with butter. So I, I grew up from an ethnic family. So I find it really funny when anyone has butter because I've never really used it in my life. And people say bread and butter. And now that I get older, I completely get it. But it's still such a new uh, concept to me. <laughs> well, I mean... I love bread and olive oil as well, but I reckon, yeah, I probably grew up with butter. Butter came first. So for me, that's where I'm going to go back to if forced to, to choose and I hope I never have to. Um, all right. Is that, have you got anything else for me or are we all eaten up? No, I planned three out. So those are my three. <laughs> I love it. So um, yeah, you've really taken me on a very delicious, rapid, but fun journey. Marseille, Tassie and yeah, home death row I don't know like some kind of island prison <laughs> <laughs> my grandmother's house in Richmond let's go with that that's a bit nicer <laughs> okay we'll go with that um so Connor what have you got planned for 2022 I've got a lot planned we're, we're looking at a few things coming up in terms of tv base and food base but currently we're just working with some really cool companies um I've got a lovely broadsheet video coming out soon where I got to visit a lot of restaurants in Melbourne um and there's a lot of cool stuff happening for me which is quite nice a lot of things I can't talk about which is annoying <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many secrets. Well, you'll, you'll have to come on for a longer chat um, on the podcast uh, through 2022. I would love to. I would love to share hospitality stories. After 10 years, there's a few. <laughs> all right. We're going to get them all out of you. Um, Connor, thank you so much for chatting to me today. You've made me very hungry and very happy. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me, Danny, and I hope you have a lovely day. This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. 
we air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about, hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you. This is